Hello YouTube friends and welcome to another one of my videos. Only a quick um, video today because I am part of a sewing group and last week um, we can't meet up anymore which is really sad but what we do is we still zoom so we still talk to each other and to be fair we talk about sewing and everything else that's happening so it's still that kind of stitch and bitch but one of them mentioned if I was still doing my Liberty quilt and I am I just haven't done it for ages. So I've pulled it out today and I thought, you know, I'll spend an hour doing it. And while I was looking at it, I thought, let's just make a quick video because there is a story behind why I did it. So my Liberty Quilt is actually um, My House on the Street by, who made this? Caroline Forster. Um, and I bought it from what was a UK um, uh, sewing channel called um, Sewing Quarter, which is now Sewing Street. And when I saw this on the television, so I was on maternity at the time, and I saw it on the TV and I thought, gosh, how that looks really good. It's really patchy. It's all the same. It's the concept of doing patchwork with the same shape. And then you can just adjust how it works. And I saw this and I thought, oh, I really like it. It's really nice. I'm good. That, and it looks, dare I say it, quite simple and straightforward. So basically, that's what it looks like. Lots of little houses, a dark row and a light row, so it kind of looks like houses on your street. Oh, realise I had my, my mouth covered when I said that. Um, and I've got some Liberty fabric, so what I've done is I've added to the Liberty fabric. The problem is, and there's always a problem with my sewing, and I think that's what my videos end up talking about, is Y seams. Oh my god god they are a pain an absolute pain and this has i think 550 odd patches and so each one of those is a y seam at the top and the bottom it's just awful and i've just spent like 20 minutes thinking oh i've done so much more sewing in the appear in the time i'm gonna this is gonna be so much easier is it no is it still complicated yes and does i do i think i'm getting a really crisp finish no um, the reason why I don't think I'm getting a crisp finish is because I'm using Liberty Lawn, which is super duper flappy light. And so when um, when I'm having to manipulate the pieces of um, fabric underneath each other, because you basically sew a line like this and then you manipulate the fabric so that you're sewing the next one like this. So you're constantly kind of shimmying and pulling it round. And because it's so light, it doesn't really have any tension. So when you pull it, it kinks and oh, it's just driving me crazy. But you have to do 11 rows of peaked houses together. So the houses peak like this. I've done three and then I kind of gave up. But I have decided that I need to persevere. And the reason for this is that this was a really good quilt that I thought would work really well for lockdown. So lockdown, everybody's in buying fabric and I spent a fortune on fabric. Uh, happily, I have now kind of calmed that down. But um, I really wanted to do something that was reminiscent of the time and I would keep it forever and it's all about being in your house or walking up and down the street because we live in a village so we see people walking up and down the street and not really doing very much more about that so I cut out close to 550 little houses da -da, and I've sewn them all together into individuals it's actually on the sewing machine at the moment into individual strips ta -ta. and I've done three of them and they look like this. So this is how they come out. This needs a really good press. It's been in kind of, it's been in its own lockdown in a cupboard because I don't want to look at it for a while. Um, and this is, you know, it, it's good. With, with an iron and a piece of um, a needle and thread, what I'm doing is I'm literally just going through and tracking. But look at these Y seams. So for each block, it's got one, two, three. And oh, it's just stressful um but it will be so rewarding she says when i've actually finished it so i'm kind of going through this at the moment so that's going to be my quilt number one on my bonina i do have a bonina stitch regulator and the only time i've used it is when i've made the girls their um christmas advent calendars you know the padded ones are about this big and then i just basically swadoodled around everything to kind of Put the sandwich together and make it a little bit more firm um, but I've not really used it on a quilt so I'm really looking forward to using it on this quilt because I only want to do kind of wavy lines going across so it kind of looks a bit more like wind I don't want to make it kind of square and 
kind of going around all of the houses because then I'm in the danger of outlining every house and oh my god that would take forever so I'm really keen to kind of get this finished that I can start really working out how do you use a banana stitch regulator rolling up making sure you've got throat space shoving it through um and kind of getting that kind of thought about or that experience of quilting something that's quite large because I've only ever done kind of small stuff like I'll do machine embroidery and I'll do kind of images of like um I think my favorite image that I've done is of a kingfisher um but the other stuff I haven't done yet so but the other thing that I wanted to share is that when you cut out that many houses I had loads of triangles and I was like what am I going to do with those because I'm not throwing them away because they're it's expensive fabric and it's pretty so I just wanted to share with you my flying geese ribbon which I love how am I going to use it I don't know and I really should look at the camera but here is my five flying geese ribbon so basically I now have 500 close to a thousand over a thousand of all of these and all I'm doing is just putting them together and sewing one line all the way through and it lives on a kind of old vintage reel that I got from a car boot sale which I, I love car boot sales. I can't wait for them to reopen up again. I get so much of my sewing stuff. And one day this will be so useful and I will be so pleased that I've had it. But at the moment, as we, as I've mentioned before, I do like decorating. So it normally sits on there, right next to my Tula ribbons. Um, and so that's where it will sit. Um, <laughs> just realised I've still got my flowers in here. So those are my Valentine flowers that were just starting to look a bit crappy. So I've turned them upside down and put them in here to dry. So quilt number one um, on uh, what's house on my street, done and dusted. Well, I've talked about it. It's not done and dusted. Um, the second quilt that I wanted to talk about was I talked about it on my last um, my last video, and it's my electric slide quilt. So. Jane and I will be in a week and a half cutting out um, our next blocks on this. So what I wanted to show you was actually the last video, it did seem to make a difference. Um, I think I'm being more precise. And what I then realised as the second issue was my cutting. So I don't think I'm cutting. I keep, I'm lining everything up and cutting it. But when I open it back out again, I've got a slight kink. And again, that's bringing it down. So I'm just compounding an issue. So I've just found that the more precise I am on this, the better. So I have finished off all of my big green and pink ones. And this, I love this colourway. And I have finished off the purple ones. Ta-da! And we've now got, I can't remember what the colour is for the next one that we're doing. Uh, let's grab the, very quickly. Ooh. So we've done uh, the green ones, we've done the purple ones, so we'll be doing the blue ones next. And then we have the black and white around the outside and then just to bind it. And again, I want to make sure that I finished the first quilt because when I come to quilt this, I really need to have some experience because the effort again on this you don't want to ruin something what is it my mum says spoil the boat for a penneth of tar so I don't really want to ruin this so even though it's all straight it's actually and there's no y seams woohoo it is actually proving quite challenging uh because I just don't want to ruin it so that's where I am with this so I'm probably um, a third maybe 40 percent of the way through one quilt I'm probably third of the way through this quilt and of course as we all know we have to have multiple projects on the go so I was going to show you my my La Paz quilt so it's a Mill Fury quilt and I can never say this it's La Paz quilt uh, blah, blah, blah. Um, but I'll put the description down so this was um, a quilt that I had seen online um, I found a generic kind of just printout and then I just made my own pattern so I have done a um, a, a video on this um, but this is kind of an update as to the t as to where I am what I've put together so the general um, principle of this was what I've done is I've decided little kind of flowers little roses and you can see that each each center has its own color because a center is specific to a particular fabric line and then some of them are smaller some of them are wider some of them are circle some of them like this one which I've actually finished is kind of like I suppose kind of heart shaped um, and the idea being is that if it's not forming part of a circle so you can kind of see it up here if it's not forming part of a circle like these ones here what I'll be doing is using the um, Tula Pink solids or their um, True Colours collection to kind of fill it in so the 
I have actually got, oh, that is so bad. I've got enough fabric lines to be able to probably do the vast majority of these. And I did change my approach. So it was all too wet. So we'll jump into the fabrics. But I did start using um, a new fabric line that I came across. And that was this fabric line. So here's one of my non tula fabrics. And it is, gosh, again, ironing, ironing. Um, this is, uh, I think it's a Brett Lewis. Um, it's the, is it the Natural Born Quilter? And his fabric line, which is called Stags and Thistles. And I absolutely love it. So look, all of the birds, lots of birds nest, lots of kind of kissing birds and sewing notions. And then the stag. Um, I have lots of stags in my house. I have lots of um, kind of British wildlife photos, pictures, um, glass etchings, all sorts of art that is kind of animal based. And it is my favourite thing to have animal, English animal based, although I do like kind of penguins and they're not really English, but um, I do like kind of the, the natural world and seeing that represented either in art or in fabric, which I suppose is up. Um, the first one that I started off with was my favourite Tula kind of pink uh, fabric, which is Elizabeth. Not an animal one, so I suppose. Um, and this is Elizabeth. So you can see the centre. So the centres are quite specific um, and how you kind of put them together. And then this is all the entire fabric line that supports that. So it's quite large. Now, these quilts are not really supposed to be this big. This is only this big because instead of using um, the actual size of the quilt, I'm using the Tula Nova pieces, which I think is almost two. I think it's about a third bigger or two thirds bigger but anyway it's massive and it is going to be massive so this is a labor of love so it's taking its time um after elizabeth i absolutely love fox nap love fox nap which is basically the little kind of fox and this is sorbet this color is called sorbet so the little fox this is from the chipper range so again it's still out of stock but it has animals in it hurrah so this is the one that i mentioned that was kind of heart shaped so it's a little bit different um, the nice thing about this quilt is that this is um, EPP as opposed to being on the sewing machine. So when I have the girls or I'm sat or if I, and I haven't picked this up for ages, I'm sat with the girls, sat in there watching a movie with Dan or doing something that I am not locked away in this room. Um, it just gives me something else to do. So still being creative, just not sat at a sewing machine. Um, and to be fair, I haven't picked this up for a while. I've been more at the sewing machine than I have um doing this but i think everybody goes through phases now the one that i'm working on at the moment is line works so line works is going to be um almost the largest on my picture it's one of these i haven't quite decided yet because i haven't got but i have so much line work fabric and there's so much that you can cut out of that fabric um you can use the same the same pattern taking different parts and then you get almost like a completely different um, kind of look to it so I've started off with let's go into the center so I started off with the kissing white um, peacocks which I was really excited I was watching Harry Potter last night and um, she'd mentioned that when she saw the white peacocks it was from the Malfoys manor they had like white peacocks going around and I was just like oh Ooh, so it's great when something when worlds collide when hobbies collide or likes collide I quite like that so this is um and you'll see I've got a bit of an ombre or I'm trying to do an ombre so you didn't really get much of a choice here um I only really had these colors to work with but as I've gone out what I've tried to do is try to kind of create some kind of ombre as it kind of goes all the way around and then the next piece is going to be the stars and I'm using her um oh what are they called it's it's like uh i think it's mineral or something like that but i now have all of these beautiful rainbow stars all done so colors on the outside black on the inside and i am literally stitching black in between so again this will ombre as a rainbow would ombre as opposed to how the fabric will ombre and they'll all go together like this round the outside and then i just keep going so the nice thing about this is that um you Literally just create a rose, put it to one side, create a rose, put it to one side. And then when I get a bit bored, what I might do is like put them together, put the um, uh, the connecting colours and fabrics together, stitch that together. And it's just kind of slowly evolving. That quilt is going to take me years. So I'm not kind of so much worried about when I finish that, what work I do on it. I mean, it's EPP is EPP. So it's the same 
piece. Whereas when I'm doing the Y seams, they're driving me crazy. Um, that's very different to when I was doing like a disappearing nine block when you're, you sew, cut, sew, cut, sew, cut. So each quilt I'm finding um, while you're um, doing that kind of repetitive motion, it's sometimes quite nice to have different styles of quilt to be working on. So when I get bored of doing straight line, straight line, straight line, and I want something a bit more creative, I might torment myself and do the Y seams. Or I might say, do you know what, I'm just going to go and do EPP and kind of put that together or make something large or make something small. So that was you know, a quick update on the three projects, why I'm doing them, how I'm doing the fabrics that I'm using. Um, I Did I mention that the slide quilt was using Tula Pink's homemade? So that's the entire homemade. And it was a kit that I bought from Lovely Jubbly Fabrics. Um, and yeah, apart from that, I'm going to get on with some sewing. I'm going to become the queen of the Y seam and I will do some more videos as we go. Happy days. Enjoy the last month or six weeks of lockdown in the UK. Bye.